Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzmong TV here, aka G Lauren33. I am back here today. It is that time of the month. Your Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 80 review slash reaction, like we always do right here on the channel. Continuing here with the Granola the Survivor arc. Uh, we have the full chapter here today. I know uh the big details of the chapter we've already pretty much talked about. If you guys have been watching my spoiler videos. Uh, throughout the week from the summary the early draft pages the panels right so most of you guys who watched that videos already knew what was going to happen coming into this chapter but still man i am very excited for it and it's i could already i already knew going into this chapter it was going to be an upgrade from what we saw in chapter 79 and chapter 79 wasn't a bad chapter you know, it was just kind of boring because it was just Gas and Granola and there was really no story content. And I felt like they needed to do a better job with making Gas interesting because to me, he just wasn't that interesting. But, you know, uh, before we get into anything, man, I I'm, I got to say this was a really good chapter. Basically, this is what we got from the spoilers and the drafts pages. Uh, and I'm excited to go through it. I did take a peek through the chapter, of course, before uh, recording. And this is a pretty damn good chapter. It's not... I, I wouldn't say it's the best chapter of the arc, but, it, you know, it is definitely a little bit up there in my opinion, right? There's a lot of cool things from story to the battles and all that. But, you know, I'm just thinking coming out of this chapter, you know, we know that the Granola arc will be ending soon. They've been talking about that in V-Jump, right? And at Jump Fiesta, they've been talking about how a new arc will be beginning after this one. And, you know, after this chapter... I don't know how they're going to end it. I'm starting to think that there's going to be a cliffhanger uh, from this arc that's going to lead directly into the next arc. Kind of like the Moro Saga, but, you know, I don't... I, I, I think that there's a chance that the Heater Clan are going to be sticking around past this arc, right? And we'll get to that once we get to the end of the chapter, of course. But, I, I, you know, I'm just starting to think with the way things are going and the way I'm seeing this story develop... I, I don't think, you know, this is the end of the Heater Clan. I think we're going to see more of them going forward in Dragon Ball Super. And, you know, like I said, we'll get to that in a little bit. But let's get into the chapter itself. So this is chapter 80, Gas versus Granola Part 2. Very, very simple title, right? Uh, Very, you know, because chapter 79 was Gas versus Granola. And, you know, this chapter is called Gas versus Granola Part 2. But even though... Uh, you know, Gas and Granola, the second part of their battle only takes place during, like, the first half of this chapter. The second half of this chapter is pretty different, right? Has a completely different focus, and we'll get to that when we get there, but, you know, uh, the title is Gas vs. Granola Part 2, and let's not waste any more time, let's get into it. So, if you guys remember, at the end of Chapter 79, right, Gas and Granola were kind of at a standstill, you know, they... Uh, we're using different techniques, mainly instant transmission, trying to get an advantage on one each other, on each other. Uh, but you know, it was an equal battle. So we see Gas start the power up here, right? Uh, you see Goku, Vegeta, and Monito are uh, watching. It is very interesting. It seems like Monito is trying to heal Vegeta uh, a little bit here. We know that Monito does have powers to heal someone to their fullest, but he can heal them a little bit. Uh, and we see uh, Mackie and Oil there watching the battle as well. So Gas powers up. Right, so Gas powers up. Uh, and remember, Granola had more control over into transmission than Gas because Gas had just used the technique for the first time. Just because Gas has access to all these techniques, he doesn't know how to use them to their fullest extent because he never trained to master those techniques like, you know, Goku. Even Granola. Granola has far better control over intertransmission now than he did at the beginning of the arc, you know? So, Granola was able to get an advantage on gas because of that. So, we see the battle continues here, right? And so, gas comes flying at Granola. I love, you know, Granola. He has that serious look on his face. He's not backing down. Granola continues to use instant transmission to get behind gas. Gas fires off an eye beam attack. Granola dodges once again with instant transmission, right? Gas can't seem to touch Granola. So Granola is doing a good job of using instant transmission. And, you know, Gas is able to, or, you know, Granola is able to get Gas to the point where he uses a technique we saw Vegeta use at the beginning of their battle 
in uh, at Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter. I believe it was 74, right? If you guys remember, at the beginning of that battle, Vegeta kind of used, like, telekinesis with the rocks and then, uh, you know, destroyed them. And we see Granoa do a very similar technique. We do know that Granoa can use Hakai, right? So, uh, Granola uses Hakai with the rocks on gas, right? Gas, you know, it does a little bit of damage to him. And then Granola comes in flying with a kick. Gas is b barely able to block in time. So, you know, the big thing here is that even though Gas is supposed to be the strongest in the universe, it's a pretty big plot point in this chapter, right? Granola is able to keep up with Gas. So, uh, Oyo says Gas might be stronger, but he's losing in the skills department. Dang, guess those Dragon Balls ain't all that after all. Mackie's like, hang on, Gas won't end it, won't let it end like this. And remember, there is always that plot point that you know you have to earn power. You know you can't. Anyway, uh, you gotta earn power. You can't. You gotta earn power. You can't just wish for. Right, there's all it's always gonna come back to bite you in the dust. So, uh, we see Granola. He, you know, I, I like this panel of him and Gas uh, classing right here. Right, they're still using its transmission. They are going hard, very, very intense. You know, uh, but we're seeing that Gas is starting to catch up. You know, to Granola in the skills department. Right, Gas says, "I can now track your every move." Goku and Vegeta are watching, of course. Vegeta says, damn it, Granola wasted too much time because, you know, it was only a matter of time since Gas is naturally stronger than Granola because of the wish. It was only going to be a matter of time that Gas caught up unless Granola was able to finish him off quickly, which, of course, he wasn't able to do. So Vegeta says, and allowed Gas to grow accustomed to those new moves, like just, just like I said. And, you know, this is where the early draft pages ended, right? So we see now Gas is taking control of the battle. He hits Granola with a nice little uppercut. And, you know, he sends Gas flying back. Gas charges in. He says, I won't lose sight of you again. But Granola is still not done yet, right? So this is a pretty cool thing. So Granola makes copies of himself. Very kind of similar to what he did against Goku. If you guys remember when Gas was fighting Goku in Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 73... You know, Goku, when he was using Ultra Instinct, he, uh, Gas was a copy, right? But Goku did not know that Gas was a copy. Gas, he divided a significant amount of his energy, not all of his energy, but he, sniff he divided a significant amount of his energy to this clone, which was stronger than Super Saiyan Blue Goku, but not stronger than Master Ultra Instinct Goku. Go Master UI Goku owned Granola. It's just that Goku was so shocked when he found out that he was fighting a copy, he lowered his guard, and that allowed Granoa to take advantage and get the win. Now we see that Granoa, instead of making one copy like he did against Goku, he makes multiple copies, many different copies, in fact, right? And he divides a lot of his energy uh, to kind of, you know, keep uh, gas off balance. It's important to note here that all these copies of Granola, right, they're not as strong as the original Granola. Granola is dividing his energy to a lot of these copies to hold Gas back. So you see Gas is surprised, and you see the clones of Granola are firing off uh, the Granola's signature key, uh, key blast, right? Those, accur those accuracy shots. And, he, you know, it looks like they're landing on Gas. You know, Goku's like, relaxed, Vegeta. You know, Granola still has the skills to win this thing. And we see that Gas is being pushed back momentarily. But all of a sudden... Gas comes in, I, like I said, I really do love the choreography of this battle. Eventually, one day when we get uh, the Dragon Ball Super anime and we get this animated, this is going to be a fun battle to see animated. I do want to say also another thing is that Tortaro's art, Tortaro's art has improved a lot. In my opinion, it's not on the level of Toriyama, but Tortaro's art has grown so much from the beginning of Dragon Ball Super to where it is now. It is really, really impressive, man. You know, his fight choreography and, you know, uh, his paneling and, and art have really, really improved. You know, some people can question this story, of course. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be critical of the Dragon Ball Super story, just like many other people out there. 
But one thing I think would be hard to deny is how much Tortor has improved as an artist, a panelist, you know, and, you know, choreographing his fight scene. So we see Gas, you know, just taking out, you know, uh, the Granoa clones one by one by one, right? Because remember, these clones are not that strong because Granola is dividing power from his original body to make these clones, right? So he takes them out pretty easily. So see, Granola, Gas says, making clones split your powers, how idiotic. Uh, but we see the clones, right? They continue to uh, rush at Gas. Gas says, this last move of yours was all or nothing. So Gas thinks this was, you know, the last ace up uh, Granola's sleeve, but it's not, as we'll see here in just a sec. This is an awesome panel right here. You know, uh, you can see it's flipped, uh, flipped horizontally, uh, but you, it's, you see this Gas, you know, this using a pretty damn cool key blast move to take out all of the clones, right? Impaling them directly in the stomach. Look at that. Pretty, pretty damn cool art. Like I said, Tortaro as an artist is really, really grown, uh, grown. There's some really, really cool artistic pieces in this chapter. I love it. So we see, right, Mackie and Oil, they, they, you know, they're smiling. They believe that, you know, Gas has the victory. Vegeta and Monito are like, uh, you know, it's over. But uh, Gas says you lost, you got lost in the power of those skills. But that's not the case. Really, really cool art. We see that the original Grono, Grono's original body, right? And, you know, he's able to sneak up on Gas while Gas is taking out the clones. And Grono says, or I was just waiting for this perfect opening. Right at that moment, Gas, you know, gets rid of all the clones, or Granola gets rid of all the clones, right? He returns the power of the clones to his original body to fire off a huge uh, key blast at point blank range right on gas look at the art this is a really really cool artistic piece like these panels man are pretty damn awesome i love it i i love it i love it i love it really awesome stuff here that's awesome this re directly reminds me well the first thing it reminds me of this is similar to how granola defeated goku right he took the energy back from that clone he was fighting goku you know, he, he returned the energy of that clone to his original body. Goku was in shock. And then Granola used that to take advantage and defeat Goku, right? We all know this from Chapter 73. You know, Granola did the same thing here, but the only difference is it was multiple clones. When he did it against Goku, it was one clone. Here against Gas, it's, you know, multiple, multiple clones. You know, we don't really have an estimate, but, you know, what? Let's just say, like, you know, at least 10, right? At least 10 clones here. Right, but pretty, pretty damn cool. Another thing that this reminds me of is from the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. If you guys remember, in the Broly movie, Vegeta once he transforms into Super Saiyan God, when he fires off that big, uh, that kind of like a big bang attack on Broly, right? It hits Broly at point blank range, and it sends Broly flying uh, into the ocean, and he actually falls unconscious for a couple moments till Broly awakens. You know, he transforms to his Akari form and the battle takes a, uh, a turn at that point, right? This is, this is, you know, I would not be surprised if Tortar was kind of referencing uh, the Broly movie here. Another thing is, look at Granola right here, man. I love, look at the veins, man. Look how jacked this guy is. That's pretty damn cool. I, I love how Jack Granola is here. So, we see, I love the expression on Gas's face as he gets sent flying Mackie and Oyo aren't in shock, right? And you see, kind of similar to what Vegeta did the Bro in the Broly movie, right? Uh, gas goes flying through the planet all the way into the ocean, knocked unconscious. Mackie and Oyo go flying after their, you know, their brother. And, you know, you can see uh, Granola uh, has the advantage once again, you know? Goku congratulates him, but remember, this battle is not over yet. And... Uh, Vegeta says, what's wrong with Granola? Any damage taken, or Goku asks, what's wrong with Granola? Vegeta says, any damage taken by the clones is felt by his real body. That final ploy was a sacrificial one, right? Even, and this is one thing I also talked about. When Granola fought Goku, Goku, you know, uh, 
Goku dominated Granola after transforming the Master UI. But after Granola, to, uh, you know, returned the clone's energy to his original body and he defeated Goku, right? It didn't seem like, you know, Granola had taken that much damage. You know, Granola did not, you know, he did not take that much damage at all. That just goes to show you how strong Granola actually was. Because Granola, you know, he was able to, he was stronger than Super Saiyan Blue Goku at that point. He wasn't stronger than Master UI. It wasn't even a battle really at that, you know, at that time. But he was stronger than Super Saiyan Blue Goku with a clone. So the fact that when Granola, after Granola defeated Goku, right? Remember, that clone took a lot of damage. Goku d defeated that clone. When Granola, you know, returned the energy of that clone to his original the to his original body, he wasn't significantly damaged, even though the clone was significantly damaged. So that just shows that Granola was really, really strong. You know, that, you know, maybe let's say half of Granola's energy, right? Half of Granola's full power was enough to take out a Super Saiyan Blue Goku, right? So th this just shows that Granola is really, really strong. Uh, so yeah, Vegeta gives us that line. Any damage taken by the clones is felt by his real body. That final ploy was a sacrificial one. So Monito comes in, right, ready to heal uh, Granola. Granola tells Monito, stay back. It's not over yet, right? So Granola's like, the you know, I haven't defeated him yet. You know, this battle's not over. So we see Mackie and Oil have pulled gas out of the river, but you could see gas is critically damaged, right? That, that you know, Granola hit him right in the vital spots in the abdomen. And we see that Alec has now arrived on the battlefield. Big thing here is, remember, Alec, uh, he wasn't at the battlefield. He was more drinking wine a little bit away, but he said that there was other business to take care of, but they never told us what that other business was. We didn't know if he was going to meet with Frieza. We didn't know if he was going to go collect the Dragon Balls again to make another wish. We didn't know if it had something to do with OG-73. They never revealed that to us. We don't know what Alec's other plan is. But we do know now that Alec is on the battlefield. Right, and Alec says, what's wrong, Gas? This isn't like you. And you can tell Alec is not concerned at all. You know, he's not concerned at all with what's happening to Gas. So we see Granola, he's shocked uh, to see Alec, right? Because remember, Alec had not shown himself till now. And uh, Mackie's like, why Why is Gas getting his butt beat, Alec? You sure you made him, you sure you made that wish to turn him into the strongest? Or to turn him into the universe's strongest, right? And Alec says, of course I did. Gas is undeniably the strongest fighter now. By a huge mar margin, in, uh, in fact. And at that moment... Uh, we see uh, Alec takes the pendant off of Gas's head. And like I said, I, I said this in the spoiler video. Originally, we thought these like little pendants or whatever they're wearing uh, were just for appearance, right? Because we know that every member of the Hero Clan has one. You can see uh, Alec has one around his groin area, right? Mackie has one around her uh, neck as a necklace, you know, around her neck. So does Oil. He has one around his neck as well. Gas has one uh, around his forehead. Another thing, and I mention this almost every single chapter, they have not revealed to us what was the condition for Gas to become the strongest in the universe. We know that Grinnell had to sacrifice almost all of his lifespan. He only has, what, something like three years left to live. I don't know if that changes now. They never revealed us if that changes now because Gas is the strongest in the universe, right? But... You know, we know that Granola had a condition. They have not revealed us if, you know, what the condition is for, is for gas, right? I thought, you know, here that maybe they were going to reveal a condition in this chapter, but they still haven't. I still think that might be a key plot point here as we, uh, as we go forward in the story. But we see, you know, gas kind of has a very concerned look on his face. So uh, does Mackie and Oil, right? Alex, you know, has no fear. He says, no point in being the strongest in the universe when all that precious power is sealed away. I know you can withstand it now. So liberate that inner nature. Some, I know some, I knew right when I read it, it was like some people are going to try to compare this to 
Ultra Instinct, but it's has, it has absolutely nothing to do with, you know, the principles of Ultra Instinct, as you guys should see. Oh, it was like, you short man, did this in turn, did the, this didn't turn out so hot 40 years ago. 40 years ago was, of course, when Gas lost to Bardock. As you guys will see, we'll talk about that a little bit later on in this chapter. So, we see uh, Oil, or not Oil, Gas starts, you know, transforming, right? His energy starts going out of control. Mackie's like, this is clearly a bad idea. When our instincts are, unle are unleashed, we lose all uh, sense of self. That's important to note. You know, I think that's a thing that might fly under the radar because that basically kind of implies that the other members of the Heater Clan have the same thing, right? This has nothing to do with Ultra Instinct. This has to do with the Heater Clan and their natural instincts, right? When our instincts are unleashed, we lose all sense of self. So that means what's happening to Gas can happen to the others. The only thing I think that is different here is... So I'm guessing that the pendants that they all wear helps to keep their instincts in fact. It's not just there for an appearance. It's there actually to keep themselves in check. Because without it, they would run out of control. Uh, the only thing is here with the other members of the Heater Clan, I think what's happening to Gas, as you guys can see in this panel, I think the same thing could happen to them. But Gas is the strongest of them all, right? I think Gas is the strongest member of the Heater Clan. So... Even though it would happen if the other members of the Heater Clan uh, took off their pennants, but since Gas is the strongest, right, Gas is clearly their best bet to win this fight. Uh, I don't think the other members of the Heater Clan would be nearly as strong as Gas if they took off their pennants. Maybe Alec, but we don't know. I think Gas is the strongest by far. So we see Alec tells uh, Gas to endure, right? Endure uh, the energy. You're not the same uh, man you were back then. So we see, and I really love this panel. We see Gas basically go out of control. He hulks out. You see uh, uh, his teeth kind of sharpen. He grows these big, uh, these big wall, uh, these big tongues like a walrus, right where it's, you know, right along his forehead. And you can see he rips out of control and he transforms, right? So we already knew you know, Gas was strong and big before. Remember when they first made the wish, Gas became big like Broly, right? Now, Gas becomes even larger than Broly, as you can see. His muscles absolutely go insane. He rips out of his, you know, he rips out of his clothes and he transforms, you know? Some people may call this berserk Gas. Some people might call this destructive instinct Gas, right? But we see Gas hawk out and you can see his energy is absolutely out of control so the goku and the other is like what's going on is that gas where'd he find another power up like that right and he goes absolutely insane so you know granola is you know it's a girl's like what is he what the hell and monito says uh in that look i saw it with my own eyes 40 years ago when bardock had gas on the ropes he lost himself and turn into that. And one thing that I find very interesting, right? I'm right now I'm looking back at Dragon Ball Super Manga chapter 77. That was the chapter about Bardock. If you see here in the past, when Bardock is having that confrontation with the Heater Clan, right? Alec at that point, he's not wearing a pendant. He's not wearing a pendant. Look. If you look at the rest of the Heater Clan, right? Is right here. We had the heater clan back then. Oil's wearing his, Mackie's wearing his or hers, right? Alex wearing his. Doesn't seem like Gas has one. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe you guys can, if you guys see something in the comment section, right? But Gas isn't wearing one. No, I don't see Gas wearing one. So maybe Gas, I, 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 I don't know what it is. Maybe Gas didn't get his pendant on until, you know, uh, after this battle with Bardock, right? Let me make sure we're still recording. Yeah, we're still going. So that is something that's very, very interesting, right? So I'm guessing after Gas lost to Bardock, that's when they put the pendant on. And we'll talk, like I said, we'll talk about Bardock here in a little bit. But uh, 
Monito says uh, when Bardock had gas on the ropes, he lost himself and turned into that. Granola says he lost himself, so that has to be his last resort, right? This has to be, you know, you know, gas at full power. Uh, so we see gas that goes, con- you know, completely berserk. He has no sense of himself, but he goes right after Granola. I like, I love the art here. Look, first of all, look at how you know Rip Granola is here, but look at the detail here on glasses. You know, uh, gas that's flying in, the hair flapping, the detail in his muscles, right? Really cool stuff here. It looks like it almost looks like you know, gas's hand is larger than most of granola. And we see, you know, at first, granola is able to dodge gas's attack, but gas is able to grab granola by the leg, like Hulk on Loki, and he starts smashing granola around. This is very, very similar to what Broly did to Goku. In the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, so you you know we we kind of got two references to the Broly movie here in this chapter. You see, get gas. I look the the expressions are the same. You if you go back to the Broly movie, Goku made the same exact expression when uh you know Broly was destroying him. Very very same expression. So. Gas starts throwing granola around, slamming him. You know, and you can see. Uh, bar, you know, Gas's energy just going everywhere. You know, it's pushing Goku and Vegeta back. They can't really even tell what's going on. And then, uh, Gas just hurls Granola into the woods. So I'm, I'm loving how the battle continues to take place all over the planet. So Granola's trying to get his bearings back, but Gas is so out of control that you know, like Gas, you know, Granola has no time to recover. You see, he grabs Granola by the head. There's really nothing Granola can do about it. And he slams, Gas slams Granola into the ground. The detail here is absolutely insane. It's awesome, but it's insane at the same time, right? And not only the Gas not only slams Granola into the ground, but he brings him under the ground. Another reference to the Broly movie, right? Remember when Broly's fighting Super Saiyan Blue Goku, Broly uh, slams... Uh, Goku uh, so hard that they go under the earth into this more like volcano uh, eruption area. You know, so I, I've noticed like three little references to Dragon Ball Super Broly uh, alone just in this chapter. I don't know if bro, I don't know if uh, Toritaro was, you know, was watching the Broly movie when writing this chapter, but it, I would not be surprised at all if Toritaro, you know, took direct inspiration from the Broly movie. For this chapter, but pretty damn cool stuff. I, I like I said, I really love the fight choreography here. Gas taking pro, uh, Granola into you know the depths of Planet Serial, just slamming him everywhere. And you see, you know, uh, it, things are happening at such a fast rate. Goku and Vegeta see uh, the debris of when Gas get, takes Granola uh, underground, and in a matter of seconds, right before Goku and Vegeta can even notice. Gas uh, takes Granola back up into the air, right? Up back into, you know, uh, uh, back, you know, into the daylight. And Goku Vegeta, have, you know, having even, don't even have time to notice. That's how fast, you know, Gas is beating Granola's ass around the planet. Still no control of himself, but then he slams Granola down. It, it, and it looks like he just throws him down violently, just throws him down, right? Mackie's like, see, he's gone and lost his mind again. Very similar to what happened with Bardock. And we see Granola, he's losing consciousness. His ear, uh, his his eyepiece, right, oatmeal is falling off. You know, and, you know, you see oatmeal is not really saying anything, you know. And then look at this. Look at this. Gas in full Hulk mode, right? And he just starts beating Granola. Look at him, man. I love the detail here. The only thing that's missing is blood. That's really the only thing that is missing here. You know, we all remember back in the Moro arc when Moro regenerated his arm while impaling Goku, right? And all the blood that was everywhere. That's the only thing that's missing here is, you know, a little bit of blood. But Gas is just, you know, destroying Granola here. Granola can't do anything and looks like Granola is on the verge of death. Very, very violent stuff here. And Goku's like, this is nuts. Granola is not going to last much longer. So Vegeta's like, hey, old man, how in the world did Bardock defeat Gas when he was like that? Monito says, I was unconscious. I didn't see. So 
Monito remembers seeing gas like that, but I'm guessing shortly afterwards, Monito fell unconscious. So maybe gas attacked Monito and he fell unconscious. We don't know, but we do, we do know that Monito saw, you know, uh, gas in that form, but he doesn't know what happened after that because he fell unconscious somehow. So we see Mackie and Oil, right? They, they're trying to calm gas down. Uh, Mackie says, destroying stuff is great and all, but don't let the... Don't let the urge take over. Come back to your senses. So they're happy that Gas is winning, of course, you know, but they, they don't want him to be this Hulk and Raid monster. They want him to be his normal self when he defeats Goku and the others, right? But, you know, and Gas tries to calm down, but he's unable to, and he actually goes after Mackie and Oil, right? He goes after uh, his brother and sister. And, uh, you know, you see he knocks... Uh, you know, oil in the face, and Mackie's barely able to dodge. And then he goes right head first into a rock, and he just starts slamming, you know, his head into a rock. So, basically, Gas's natural instinct here is just to destroy. That's basically what it is. That's why I'm kind of calling this, you know, destructive instinct Gas, right? I don't know if that's going to be his official name, but that's well, I think that would be the perfect name for this form of Gas. Destructive instinct Gas. You know, uh, you see, he just goes after, uh, he's just destroying everything in sight. Let's get back into it. So, basically, uh, Alec then arrives to where, you know, Mac and Oi were, and, you know, they tell him that, you know, nothing's working, right? You know, what, what, what do we do now? You know, Gas has no control of himself. But Alec still is, you know, still believes that, Everything is, is fine. You know, Alex says, uh, you know, the universe's strongest warriors should have greater control over his own power than any other. I really do like that line from Alex here, right? Clearly, of course, he talked about gas, but you can also kind of imply that line. You can kind of apply that to, you know, Dragon Ball in general, right? The universe's strongest warriors should have greater control over his own power than any other. I mean, we know Alex all about intelligence, but... You can kind of apply that to Goku with Ultra Instinct. You can kind of apply it to Vegeta with Ultra Ego. You know, if you want to call yourself the strongest in the universe, you need to always be able to control your power, right, and how you use it. And uh, we see uh, then Gas continues to rage, and now he comes directly at Goku and Vegeta, right? Remember, you know, Gas is, is flying at such a fast rate and, you know, usually here, what would Goku be saying? Goku would say, Vegeta, get out of the way. That's classic Goku, always looking out for Vegeta. Uh, but the thing about it is, Gas is, you know, hulking out at such a fast rate that even the others can't see it. You see, Gas flies directly at Vegeta, and Goku doesn't even see it coming. It happens so fast that, look, Gas hits Vegeta with a huge kick to the stomach, and Goku and Monito are in delay when, when it happens. They don't even see it. Because that's how fast gas is at this moment. You know? Uh, and the thing about it is, you know, remember, this is the first interaction that Vegeta and gas have had. You know, gas has fought Goku, right? Goku got a couple shots in on it, you know? Uh, but that was before this happened, of course. And, of course, we've seen gas versus Granola the last couple chapters. Vegeta has not fought. I think the last time Vegeta fought was, what was it? Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 76, if I'm correct? Right? Vegeta, yeah, it's been about four chapters since we actually seen Vegeta in action. You know? But, uh, you know, I guess Toritaro was like, alright, we had, you know, Gas beat Goku down a little bit and beat down Granola. Now it's time for Vegeta to get his ass whooped again. And, you know, what's funny is, you know, remember, at the beginning of this chapter, we saw Monito trying to heal Vegeta, and it did absolutely nothing. Right? Remember, uh, Vegeta, you know, earlier, he had his eyes swollen. He had his eyes swollen and, you know, could barely stand from his battle with Granola. Monito was at least able to heal Vegeta to the point where, you know, his eyes were open again. But then Vegeta gets, goes right back to getting his ass kicked here by, uh, by Gas, if you see. Look at it. Vegeta gets taken out. Uh, and I'm like, like I said, I think Torta was like, all right, it's time for uh, Vegeta to get uh, an ass whooping here. It's Vegeta's turn to get his ass whooped. 
Right. I don't. I hope people don't get too mad about Vijay getting his ass uh, whooped here because we've seen Goku and Granola also get their ass whooped in the last couple of chapters. So it's not really surprising. But uh, so we see, right, the gas takes Vegeta out in the Abinant area, slams Vegeta in a rock, right? You can see Vegeta spitting out, you know, saliva, you know, as he's completely take, he was completely taken aback. And then now gas goes ham on Vegeta, right? Ham, and there's nothing Vegeta could do. Vegeta is getting absolutely wrecked. Goku now flies in. He says his classic, Vegeta. You know, he goes in to try to defend Vegeta here. You know, even though Goku knows he doesn't really have the strength, you know, to go against Gas right now. But Gas sees Goku coming and he blocks it, you know. But at that moment, Gas has a flashback. And this is easily my favorite part of the chapter right here. So Gas, we've seen Goku coming in to hit him with a left hand. It directly reminds him of when he fought Bardock 40 years ago in the same form, right? In the same form, in the same state. So we get a direct comparison. Goku throwing a left hand at gas. Very, very similar to Bardock throwing a left hand here. And I love it. This is what I've been wanting. I've been saying this. I, I knew at some point that, you know, that Bardock you know, would come back. I knew that, you know, Gas would see uh, Bardock when fighting Goku. So I absolutely love this here. I love this flashback to the past with Bardock. So we see, right, Bardock comes in with the left hand. You can see he's heavily damaged. His armor is pretty uh, destroyed, you know, but he's doing his best. He knows there's no other choice, right? If he's going to survive, if Kid Granola is going to survive, if Monito's going to survive, he has to defeat Gas here. We know that, of course, Granola's mom is dead, but, you know, Bardock knows what he has to do. So we see, right, Bardock then, after throwing the left hand, he retreats, and then he forms a key blast, very similar to what he did against Frieza uh, in his final stand. Very, very similar to what he did against Frieza. And you can see it's almost like a reference also to when Goku did the uh, angry Kamamaha, the Frieza on Planet Namek. So it's like you're getting more Easter eggs. We've been getting Easter eggs to the battle in Dragon Ball Super Broly. Now we're getting Easter eggs uh, with Bardock here, right? Bardock throwing a key blast at gas. Uh, so, you know, similar to how he went down against Frieza. Similar to how Goku defeated Frieza as a Super Saiyan uh, on Planet Namek. So really, really cool Easter eggs here in these panels. And we see, uh, you know, gas uh, can't stop it. And, you know, uh, this is most likely how Bardock defeated Gas, right? That was a question we've been asking. How did Bardock defeat Gas? And this seems uh, to be how it was. Remember here, you know, yes, even though Gas is super strong when he's in this Hulk state, Gas was nowhere near as strong as he was now back then, right? We know that for a fact. Gas was nowhere near this strong, right, this strong Back then, he's on a completely different level now than he than where he was forty years ago. But uh, still, the fact that Bardock was able to take out Gas is very, very impressive. And remember, Bardock was considered a low level Saiyan. Uh, when my guess is here that you know uh, Gas hulked out so hard and lost control of himself that it gave Bardock the opening to catch uh to catch Gas uh off bounds with this key attack and it was able to defeat him right because of course you, you could look here right gas did take damage you can see the scars so it, was, it wasn't like Bardock wasn't landing any hits on gas so you know uh yeah he was able you know get the advantage on gas when gas was hulking out right and it made gas make a mistake so you see we go back here to the present and uh, we see that, you know, because Gas has that flashback, it seems like Goku's attack connects. But even Goku's in shock. Goku's like, what the fuck is going on? Right? You know, Goku didn't expect to be successful with that attack. He was just trying to defend Vegeta there. Right? And we see Vegeta's almost on the verge of uh, falling unconscious once again because, you know, Gas beat his ass for those couple seconds. Uh... 
But we see, right, Gas starts losing his mind. Gas is still not able to control himself. But Gas, you know, he's like, wait, you know, it's almost like he's having a nightmare reliving what happened with Bardock 40 years ago. But Alec then arrives, and Alec still is not concerned at all. Alec is able to get in touch with his brother, and he's like, go on, Gas, remember. You swore to never lose again, right? And at that moment, Gas, like, is able to control himself and everyone is shocked. And we see Gas. This is pretty cool. Gas returns to his adult form. He returns to his normal form. He looks pretty damn cool here. But he re he still has the tusks. Right. And then he also, you know, regenerates his clothes to where they were before. And you see, you know, uh, Gas with the tusks. You know, he is. He seems like he was also able to heal himself. He looks like he has fully been able to heal himself. And is back at full strength, more powerful than ever. Him having the tusk kind of symbolized now that he's been able to, you know, reel that power in. And, you know, this is, I guess we can call a full power gas, right? Or, you know, gas with, you know, uh, berserk control, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it full power gas, final form gas, whatever it is. But you see Alex like, yes, there you go. You know, and Goku's like, it looks like he's had some kind of awakening. Goku's in shock. And Alex, like, my little brother is the strongest in the universe for real now. Go on, gas, annihilate those who stand in our way. That's how the chapter ends as gas nods. And he's like, yes, brother, I hear you. Now, now it is a big critical situation for our heroes. Because not only has gas, you know, been able to now control that berserk power, right? He's also healed. He's also healed. He regenerates his clothes. And it looks like, you know, whatever Granola did to him now, right? Whatever Granola did to Gas, whatever damage Granola was able to land on Gas, it doesn't mean anything anymore. It's kind of like Moro when he absorbed OG-73. It's like Moro was completely healed, you know? And uh, now this is the most dangerous version of Gas. And what's also crazy here is Granola's been taken out. Right, we see here Granola's down for the count, you know, pretty much unconscious here. Vegeta, Vegeta doesn't have much left, right? Vegeta got his ass whooped. Goku doesn't have much left. Goku's not in the same state as you know, Vegeta and Granola, but I, it would only probably take a couple punches from Gas to uh, you know, to put Goku in the same state as Vegeta and Granola. Now, what's gonna happen? Now what's going to happen, right? Because, you know, we've seen Gas already kick Goku and Vegeta's ass. You know, we saw him whoop Granola's ass. Even though Granola gave it his best, you know, he whooped Granola's ass. There's no more sensu aids. Monito can't heal these guys to full power. Monito does not have that ability, right? We know that we're nearing the end of this arc. What's going to happen? Is there some way that Goku and Vegeta can tap in to UI or Ultra Instinct, even though they are nowhere near, you know, 100% uh, stamina. Is there some way? I don't know. You know, I don't know. But, you know, it's, it's going to be very interesting. This is a big cliffhanger because right now, I honestly don't know what's going to happen. You know, we can speculate, right? But, you know, maybe Beers and Weiss, you know, appear, right? Maybe Beers and Weiss have been watching the battle from... Beers is planted, and maybe, you know, they choose to appear. But remember, we said I can't really interfere. I'm not expecting Beers and Weiss to come to the, the rescue, right? And I think that would actually hurt this arc a lot if Beers and Weiss appear. Goku and Vegeta and Granola are going to have to figure out something. I don't know what it is. They don't have sensu beans. Monito isn't able to heal them back to full strength, right? And there's also part of me that believes that maybe Monito is going to bite the biscuit next chapter. Kind of like Dende in the Frieza saga. Maybe I'm wrong, but maybe, you know, Monito, you know, dying, uh, maybe is what the others need to, you know, have that final awakening to be able to go beyond their limits and, you know, go back in the UI or UE. Maybe that's what's going to happen. I don't know. But, look, I'm, I, I honestly, you know, now that Gas is back at full health and is more powerful than ever, I, I don't know how they're going to be able to defeat this guy. I don't. It's going to be very, very interesting. But 
Uh, look, man, I, I don't know. I'm excited for next chapter. You know, will it be another chapter of just gas destroying Goku and Vegeta and the others? Because we've already kind of seen that, right? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But it is looking... It is looking rough for our heroes. We know that Goku and Vegeta will survive, right? Just because of the, the, you know, the DBS movie and then the new arc and everything like that. Plus, of course, this takes place before the end of Z. But we have no idea how they're going to get out of this. I'm, I'm starting to think, I said this earlier, I'm starting to think maybe there's a chance that, you know, this could be a cliffhanger for the next arc. Maybe somehow they they pull out a miracle and Goku go... UI and Vegeta goes UE and they team up and they're barely able to take out gas, right? Maybe they do a cliffhanger because we don't know what's going to happen with OG73. We don't know what Alex's other plan was. Maybe the next arc, you know, is a direct sequel to this arc and maybe Alex tries to get revenge on Goku and the others. Maybe that's the plan. Maybe Goku and the others are barely able to defeat gas and get home with the victory and then Alex tries to get revenge on them next chapter because we know there's another plot point here with Alec we know he has a plan up his sleeve you know we know he wanted to make gas the strongest in the universe which he did but there has to be another story point here what else was you know part of Alec's plan they have not revealed to that to us yet and the other thing is they have not revealed to us what the condition was to make gas the strongest in the universe they have not Reveal that condition to us. Maybe that will get revealed to us in the next chapter. Maybe whatever that condition is, is the key to victory for our heroes. I don't know. The way they wrap up this arc and this battle is going to be very critical to the way a lot of people look at this arc. Because I love this arc. It's one of my favorites up there in Dragon Ball Super. I, You know, when the arc ends, we'll talk about, you know, where it ranks in my opinion. But I love this arc, but a lot of the legacy of this arc and the way people perceive and look back at this arc is going to depend on how they end it here. We're at a very critical stage because if we are near the end of this story, right, how are they going to wrap this up? How are Goku and the others going to get the victory? I don't know. I honestly don't know right now. There's no sensu beans. There's no beers and weeds at the moment. There's no Monit. Monito can't heal them. I don't know. Right, and you know, Granola's down for the count. Maybe Oatmeal has a plan. Maybe Oatmeal has something to help these guys. I don't know, but it's going to be very et- interesting to see what happens next chapter. And I'm excited, man. I love Cliffhanger. Because now I'm going to be wondering for the next month, just like you guys, how the hell are they going to defeat this guy? How are they going to take out Gas? And I will also say this. They did a really good job in this chapter of making Gas interesting. That was one of my complaints. I didn't think Gas was that interesting, you know, but I think they did a good job in this chapter of making him a little more interesting, you know, and I like the whole Alec dynamic and everything, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. There's still a lot of unanswered questions and we're not at the end yet, but we know we're close to it. How are they going to wrap this up? I don't know how Torto, I don't know what Torto is going to do, but it's going to be something. It is going to be something. But, like I said, this was a good chapter. This was a good chapter. I enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of the chapter in the comment section down below. How? What, what, what predictions do you guys have? I don't really know. I might make an extra video on this. I don't know. But let me know what you guys think. How do you guys think Goku and the others are going to get out of this situation? Do they have something that they can use to take out gas? I don't know. I I honestly don't know. But let me know uh, what you guys think in the comment section down below. Did you guys enjoy the chapter? Did you guys not? Why? Let me know. Uh, and let me know also what you guys think is going to happen in chapter 81. Because I love this cliffhanger. And now for the next month, we're going to be wondering how the hell are they going to beat this guy. Uh, but, you know, uh, other than that, guys, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys as always for joining me here for our live reactions and review every single month. You guys are amazing. If you guys enjoyed the chapter, of course, please leave a like on the video. Uh, it does mean a lot. I have, I'm have, i going to have some more videos coming out in the next couple of weeks of the aftermath of this chapter and where we're going. Of course, if you guys love Dragon Ball, this is your home. Please leave a like, subscribe. You guys are new to the channel. 
by hitting the bell right to my name, Fitzpunk TV, so you guys are notified every time I post a new video. Follow me down on social media. The links are in the description down below. I'll see you guys later. Stay safe and healthy, y'all.